the yeah the stage yes. is yours as soon as the presentation is running. Yes, my name again uh, is called Sam Bosiel. Uh, I'm working in the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Uh, the, the research group that I'm working in is called the NTNU Nanomechanical Lab. We are very, very interested in uh, mechanical phenomena at nanometer scale. So here uh, today I'd like to share with you our research on the topic very specific here, it's intrinsic ice adhesion. And to make my story really short, I made a small picture here, you see. So what I do, basically, all the same, the procedure that do my research is to model a tall mystic ice model on different surfaces and apply force, either in tensile force this way or shielding force. And to understand the tall mystic interaction at the icing interface, the interface between ice and the substrate, the how to understand how that is force responds to external uh, 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 loading. And uh, the I would say the, the basic fundamental atomic force between ice and the substrate is rather simple. There's basically two. So there are Coulombic forces be because of charge, and there's also one the wall forces. And sometimes these two forces come together to make hydrogen bonds. Although they're simple, but the collective response of them, of these all, all the inter all the force at the interface to external force could be highly complex especially on different surfaces. So that, that make why understanding ice adhesion is not an easy task. So uh, in, in my talk, let me first motivate my study by introducing you again, the icing problem. Remember that I'm working in Norway, we have lots of ice to play around. And then we go to the point, intrinsic ice adhesion. And I will also very briefly, briefly introduce the, the toolbox that we're working with, atomistic modeling, and then show you the examples that uh, we have the, the, the study that we have done in our lab and also the other study that we're still doing yet. And I'd like to share uh, with you my understanding, very personal and very limited understanding on ice adhesion in the concluding remark. So ice. Uh, uh, ice could be quite difficult because I'm living in Norway, I know. We have a very long and dark and cold wind with lots of ice. So here I saw you two examples. So there's the, uh, the picture on the, on the left is icing on the boat shipping in the Nordic Sea. You see, here with so much ice accumulating on the, on the boat, it raised safety issues for the, to the crew on the boat. And also the icing could also severely damage the instrument on the boat. And the other one is the ice accumulate on the transmission cable you see here. So the highest record of ice accumulate on the one meter cable is 378 kilograms. And this record is not record in Norway, but in Iceland, but nevertheless, same situation applied in Norway. So in such situations, you can imagine that the, the cable is brought down to the ground and you could damage the high voltage tower like this ones. So we have many, many issues like this in Norway and uh, not in Norway, in the cold region of the world. And in, in hot area, for instance, in your refrigerator, the frozen cabinet, ice also adhere onto different surfaces that are very difficult to take them off. So to, to combat icing, for instance, or, or, or make the, 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 the question more focused, that is to, that many may approach, but our approach we believe that to make surfaces, surfaces that have a lowest ice adhesion would be the best solution. Because as long as the ice not like to adhere on the surface, when it's accumulated, it could be taken off by its or gravity or by natural forces like wind or, or, or small vibrations. So making surface with low ice adhesion is critically important for realize this low ice adhesion goal, so to speak. And so when we look at ice adhesion on the surface, it's not all the whole surface are responsible for the ice, strong ice adhesion force, but only the, the, the part that have a truly contact between ice and substrate. As I saw one example here, this is soft coating and there's ice onto it when applied force. Some of the surface could deform, but there's a there are loci that are strongly adhere there. This is the so-called intrinsic ice contact. And the force of the ice attaching there is the so-called, by definition, the intrinsic ice adhesion here. So we believe that we, we can make a way or understand ways to weaken the ice adhesion at this locus. We can realize low ice adhesion in experiments or in application. And this is what we're heading for. 
Yeah. So uh, normally these loci are rel relatively small. It can as small as um, some hundred nanometers. So to study these sizes, we need methodologies, either in experiments, for instance, the, the atomic force microscope to focus this very precise area to understand what happened. And in our way, we can also choose atomistic modeling. Uh, so another example in our work to model it directly using con uh, well aseptic water model and then atomic potential to realize uh, the ice is doing experiments and the applied force in the same way. So this is what we have doing as the picture, the same as the first picture I saw in the first uh, uh, slide. Yeah, so I hope that I have explained myself clear that, that we, we model ice, very, very small, tiny, tiny, small ice on the different surfaces, apply force, and then understand how the force come from, uh, what kind of a, a, a important points to realize, to, uh, to, to, to make the ice adhere more strongly or weakly, so this is what we do. So have this in our mind, let's show you the examples that we have done in our nanomechanical lab. <coughs> so the first example we want to do, we want to realize ice skating on the North Pole. So you can see the picture, the painting. See, there is not a picture here. So this happy guy skating on the ice. Why people can skate on the ice? That is because people believe that um, at the interface of ice and the ice skating break, there's a small layer of lubricating water layer there. And uh, you can skate because the ice is, is the adhesion is low. But uh, at low temperature, for instance, minus 60 at the North Pole, even this layer could be frozen. And you're going to go skate in North Pole. You put on your ice skating blade, you walk on the ice, and you become sticky. So you cannot skate anymore. So the idea to generate a lubricating layer at extremely temperature uh, could be uh, a good solution for anti-icing a, a, a low, low temperature environment, for instance, in the Nordic Sea. So what we do is we use atomic modeling to model different uh, uh, molecules at tiny, tiny nanometer range thickness and to test its lubrication effect. And I saw here one of the examples is the ethanol. So we build ethanol layer here in atomic modeling, and then we test the lubricating effect at different temperature down to minus 60. So here with the lower temperature, the, the, this layer becomes more viscous, so to speak, because the friction, not, not friction for force, the shielding force we, we observe during shielding is increasing, but nevertheless, at low temperature, like minus 60, the lubrication effect still works. So we provide this piece of information to experiments, and one of our colleagues, they fabricate two samples. One cannot generate uh, this uh, ethanol layer, and the other one can generate the ethanol layer, and we just let it frozen. And at some point, we take the, turn it around this way, and you see, interestingly, it fall off by itself. So we did realize <coughs> uh, automatic de-icing uh, effect. And uh, interestingly, this, this uh, coding that we fabricate in our lab with collaboration with our experimentalists have a lifetime of almost two years. So I recommend you, if you're interested, you can check our paper here. So this is a small piece of work that we have done. And the second example I, I would like to show you is we try to understand or we try to seed or initiate the design concept of low ice adhesion surfaces. Talking about breaking ice from the surface, as we saw here, we're talking about to break the interaction between ice and the substrate. So this is representing the interaction between ice and the substrate. So there's two ways. We can break all the atomic force at once. <laughs> that's off. Or we can just peeling apart, like step by step. So as you can imagine, the change of the energy, or the adhesion energy, as our first speaker saw us, as you change differently. So in this way, the slope is more, is the tension is lower. So in this way, you can intuitively understand that we can, we can get low forces from these ice tilling, uh, the icing method. So in order to realize that we somehow design a freeze scale inspired surface. So we, we use a uh, graphene platelets as a pr prototype of the unit for the surface to assemble a surface like a freeze scale. 
and put ice onto it and then kill it apart. So indeed, we, we, <coughs> we reach a very, uh, compared to the, the other surface that do not have this mechanical function, we do realize much lower ice adhesion stress. <coughs> in, in, in this case, now we already uh, have somehow finite our theoretical design when now uh, trying to use 3D printing to realize the real surface and then see how it goes. So this project is partly finished but partly still ongoing. And <coughs> talking about breaking the interaction between ice and the substrate, we also would like to understand what really happened there. Because ice as a material it could be a little bit different from metal. Uh, metallic material is a little bit softer compared to metal. So how does the interaction break under force would be uh, very interesting to us. So here we build different lengths of the ice. So this is the length of ice and we use force to pull it. And interestingly, <coughs> <laughs> with the increase of the of the length of the L, the, the force that need to displace the ice increase to a somehow a plateau. It does not go any further. That means the longer the ice you may be you, you, you may build in a tall mystic scale, <laughs> you can always only reach some uh, certain amount of maximum force range. And I would like to I need to notify that here is atomic scale. So in experiments, you build a surface, the bigger the surface, you may require large forces. But because the model here is so small, we have studied the small, small, tiny, tiny part, tiny loci of this big ice coating. Uh, only a small part is local uh, mechanical effects, so to say. So although bigger ice coating and bigger ice could require high forces, but locally, no matter how big it is, the local force can only reach a certain level. And you might wondering why. We're also very interested in finding out why. So we look into what really happened at the ice and the substrate interface. We see that actually. So in uh, you can put kind of monitor here along the atomic stick model and see when at what time it break. We find interestingly they break at the stair up cases. So there are unique lengths of the interface that break almost at the same time. And that I would personally call it the force bending unit. So there are only three or four force bending units are working together always, uh, no more. So that means this interface can only withstand some high forces, no further. So yeah, with that, Professor Bobon is trying to stop me. So <laughs> So we're working on intrinsic ice adhesion. So for me, atomic modeling, we are studying very, very small, tiny point, but we do need information for experiments to understand macroscopic ice adhesion. And in this conference, they're overwhelming using finite element analysis. But atomic modeling could be also equally useful. So I hope the next time I have a chance to join, I will see more. And then, yeah. Uh, Hopefully, in the end, we have more study and then we reach a multi-scale prediction, prediction as the hidden. And with that, I'd like to notify the key personnel in this study. So Professor Zhiliang Zhang, Professor Jian Yinghe are the lead of the research group. And uh, this is Yi Zhe Zhuo and Wang Feng, our previous PhD candidate and my colleague. They are now professors in China. And the last person, uh, Mr. Yang Hao Chan, he is a uh, at the end of his PhD candidates. He is an excellent, uh, highly skillful, Atomic modeler, and if you have questions you like to, you can contact me or Yin Hao Chan too. And thank you. And now ready to take your questions.